Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today we have another lip watch, a beautiful one, a panoramic model. Uh, this is a very specific model you saw with like a, a very strange glass on the top, like which is uh, fully recovering the front of the watch. So we go straight to the back of the watch and see this uh, nice movement. It's an R23 movement, so an uh, old movement from, uh, from lip. And uh, we start disassembling the case screw, which are holding the movement in place. So screw the first one, now we do the second one. You can see the movement stop because one of the hand is probably touching on the other side. Uh, that's, uh, or it, it was out of wine. Okay, we remove the screw. Next thing is we need to remove the stem. So for that, we just do one turn and we pull out the stem. It should come. There you go. It's coming nicely. And yeah, just from the front, I remove the glass. So with a knife, I just pop it underneath and we can remove the glass because actually you need to take the mechanism from the front here yeah, and not the back. So put a plastic protection. I remove the hand with a Presto tool. Just need to make sure I don't damage the dial and just push them up very gently. That's it, they are fully detached. Now I can take them with my tweezers. This dial is, uh, and this watch is quite in good shape. Okay, and you saw it came by the front and not the back, yeah? so I need to remove the glass in order to remove the, the movement. So now we are going to remove the dial by removing the screws. There is two screws holding the, the feet of the dial and when the screws are undone we can gently push the dial up yeah, and it come out here. Yeah. You can see the back of the mechanism, it looks pretty standard, like very industrial. So yeah, Lip uh, was a French manufacturer uh, known for the, for the model, like a very popular model in, in France, yeah, uh, very popular brand. So they are they were like very reliable um, and kind of mid-market. It was not a cheap watch, but it was quite good value for money. You can see the mechanism is is not very nice looking, but it's a, it's, it's, it's a good mechanism. So they were quite robust and a good value for money at the time. So, okay, we remove the balance assembly. Put it away to, to keep it safe. Put the stem back in place. Then we need to use the stem when I uh, and the crown when I take the power out. See, I put a bit of a wine. Just hold the click spring to make sure it doesn't interact with the ratchet wheel, and I gently release the power. There was no much power in a, in, a, in a watch, so yeah, just a couple of turn. Okay, so now the power is out, we, we can carry on with the disassembly. We're going to remove the screws which are on the pallet fork cork here, yeah, which is on the, holding the pallet fork in place. So, we go. Remove the first screw. Ah, it fell somewhere. They are very small, so you need to be really careful when you, when you handle them. Don't use as well too much pressure on your tweezers, or else you will... Uh, push them and uh, they will jump. Second one is a bit tight. Maybe it's not fully unscrewed sometimes, it's just missing a quarter of a turn. So by just turning the head, you will see it comes. Okay, so now we try to remove the palette for cock. Yeah, it is coming. Nice and I can remove the pallet fork. Okay, checking the wheel, yeah, looks everything looks good. We can carry on with the rest of the disassembly. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go to remove the, the train of wheel first. So first we need to remove the bridge, which is on the top. Secure it in place with these 
two big screws actually for 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 a watch size is like is, is, they are quite big okay they are out and now with a screwdriver blade just gently lifting the bridge and taking it with my tweezers see there is oh there we go it's coming just don't need to put a lot of force when you remove the bridge because you don't want to damage the wheels which are underneath okay so this is different design you see there is another bridge underneath i don't know if you saw yeah we will see later on um, it's different from other mechanism i i i worked on so that's yeah we we'll see later so now i'm i removed the ratchet wheel This is a click spring, so that's the, the, the bit I was holding when I was unwinding the watch. So this is the, the click that makes sure that the power stays in the mainspring, it doesn't turn, it stays in the tension. Okay, the screw is stuck, yeah, maybe some dried up oil or grease on it. Yeah, just checking the screw because some of the screws are tiny bit different sometimes it's very diffi difficult to see the difference between each screws yeah some have little shoulders underneath some are longer than other so you need to make sure you know oh you see the spring just jump yeah and that can be a pain but i'm very lucky it just it did not go very far so found it okay now we are going to remove the crown wheel need to Untie the opposite way because this is a reverse uh, threaded screw. You see the three line on top of the screw head. That means it's a reverse threaded. It's a it's a nice uh, warning sign for for the watchmaker. Okay, now let's get the wheel. Yeah, everything looks good. We can carry on with uh, removing. The train of wheel. So you see, there is two wheels on the top of this under plate. So there is one there. That's the second one. And after you have another plate. Now I get the escape wheel out of the way, and there is another plate holding the great wheel, the one which come in contact with the with the mainspring barrel. So I remove. There is only one screw holding this plate, and you see it's, uh, the, the top pivot is in contact with. There is a jewel on this plate here yeah. that we'll have to clean as well and oil properly when we put the watch back together. Okay, and you see the, the, the wheel is under the barrel assembly, so we need to remove first the barrel bridge, which is uh, kept in place with two screws. Again, it's like big screws. Remove the first one. And now I'm going to remove the second one. So you see at the at the top next to Leap, you see the, the model number is uh, R23D. Uh, so yeah, this 23 is like different movements uh, in the family, obviously A, B, C, D, and I don't remember if there is an E or F version. So the D is one of the latest version, which is beating at uh, 21,600 bits. Um, so the standard one was 18,000. So it's uh, like a bit of uh, an upgrade if you want. It's beating a bit faster. Okay, I remove the cannon pinion. And this is a wheel that was friction mounted uh, attached to the cannon pinion. Now I'm going to remove the setting lever spring. I oh, know, sorry, this is not the setting lever, it's another place. There is two, it's a two part design. So there is a part on the top uh, which is holding the, the minute wheel and the little wheel which is underneath. Some of the mechanism you don't have this plate or is one piece with the uh, you see that stuck that means there is some dried up oil or grease so 
need a good clean. So the watch, I put it on a time grapher, the watch was running okay, but uh, low, very low amplitude. Uh, so this means, yeah, when it's a low amplitude, uh, it means you need a, a service. Oh, you see, when you use too much uh, strength on the tweezers, it can jump like that, so you need to be really careful. Uh, that comes with time as well, when you get more and more used to it, you will put the right amount of pressure with your tweezers, uh, not too much, uh, or else you you see the park and jump. So now I remove the setting lever spring, which is all in, which is all in place with one screw. Here we go. Yeah, that's out. And now we can see the keyless work underneath. So this is a mechanism that make it switch from winding position to the change, changing time position. First I remove the spring by holding it with a bit of Rodico. You see it did not jump very far because if I did not hold it with Rodico it, would probably, it probably went very far. So and after you spend a lot of time looking because it's really small. So when you remove the spring uh, you need to use a bit of uh, precaution by using another with your other hand to keep it in place. So the setting lever is a, is a screw. It's all it's holding up. It's holding in with a screw. So just I remove the screw from the other side. And now I can remove the stem, and the clutch wheel, and the winding pinion, which are which which are the last two parts. Okay. And now I'm going to put all the parts in a cleaning basket and we go in an ultrasonic machine to get a good clean. But before that, we need to put the balance back on the bridge to make sure it's, uh, it's safe during the, during the cleaning because this is a very small part uh, with like the air spring, which can be a delicate part. So you don't want to damage anything. So you need to I always put it back on a part. Okay, so now screw it in place, just move it around to see if it's nicely located in a, in a jewels. Looks okay. So after now I clean the parts, uh, I start by the mainspring barrel assembly. So you see I put a, a new uh, mainspring. So I just order, uh, uh, I order most of my part on uh, cousin.co.uk, which is a website I really like. And I found it very easy to find the, the right part for your movement. So the main spring, you see, I press it down, it went in, put a bit of 9104 on the shoulder at the bottom, and now I will press in the arbor, the barrel arbor. Okay, it's nicely located. And now I put it in this little tool. Uh, it is just a tool to close uh, the main spring assembly, main spring barrel. So put a bit of oil before, grease, sorry, on the, on the main spring. And now I just put a lid on top of it and uh, just close it by pushing it into place. There we go. So now it's uh, main spring is assembled, so we can move to the main plate. Put a bit of uh, 9104 there, and in the center we're gonna where the where the great wheel is gonna come. And remember when we did assemble, the great wheel was underneath the main spring barrel, so we need to put this wheel first and after we put the barrel, the main spring barrel on top of it. There we go, you see it's nicely connected. When I rotate the main spring barrel, the wheel is turning. So now we can carry on with the train of wheel. Uh, where, where does it go? There's a lot of jewels here, yeah, it goes to this one. The other one is for the pallet fork. Okay, it's sitting flat. Put a bit of 9104 on the shoulder of this wheel because you remember there is a kind of uh, intermediate plate that go and it has a little jewels there so you need to make sure it's, it's lubricated so I clean it and I put a bit of uh, 9104 okay 
So we just need to make sure everything is aligned perfectly, everything is in place. And when it is, it should lay perfectly flat as it is right now. I'm just, you see, checking with the tweezers that nothing is moving. And as soon as it's done, you just put one screw. Okay, so if you like this type of video, uh, it will really help me if you subscribe to my channel. So you will get a nice reminder when I put uh, new videos. And yeah, if you like this video, please like. It will help other people to see, the, to see this video. Yeah. So thanks for your help and your support. Okay, after putting the intermediate plate, I'm carrying on with assembling the, the rest of the wheel from the train wheel. This one is, is hard to put in place because he has a very long pivot underneath. So, and you don't see anything because you need to go through this plate. So yeah, you just need to make sure you just move it gently around up. You see, he fell into position into the, the jewels underneath. Okay. And now I put the center, the center wheels go through. The first one we put, uh, it go through the middle with like, uh, a long pivot, that's where we'll have the second the second uh, hand is gonna attach to this pivot, yeah. Okay, it went nicely in place. And now everything is in place, so all the all the wheels are in place, we can put the bridge, the top bridge. So this, we need to do the same on this side. We need to make sure that all the pivots from the wheels align with these three jewels. That's a red uh, color bit that you see on the main plate. Yeah. And this, I was, it looks like I was very lucky, like, because normally it's like a pain to, to align them. And here I put it straight on and everything went into the, the jewels straight away, like the, all the wheels. Because yeah, you can see it's turning. When I when I turn the the barrel assembly, the escape wheel, so it's been all the wheel are driven from the barrel to the escape. So I just keep a bit of pressure with the red stick on the on the bridge to make sure everything stay in place and I just put the first screw. Now everything is in place. With the first screw is quite secure. And I'm going I'm putting straight away the second one. And when that's done, maybe we see if everything is everything is turning, still turning. Yeah? Quick check. And you see, as soon as I turn, everything is turning. So that's perfect. Yeah. Okay, just add tie the screw properly. Perfect. So now we can uh, carry on with the rest of the assembly. So the train of wheel is done. What's left is uh, on the barrel side. So just checking again, everything is fine. Looks good. Just make sure it's laid down flat. And now I'm putting the last bridge from uh, for, for this side. So this one is easier to put in place because there is on this design there is only the main spring barrel which you need to locate so it's only one thing to locate and it's quite big so it's easy to put in place so now it's in place I just put all the screw back like I said when I disassemble these screws are very, uh, it's nice to work because they are quite big so you can use a big screwdriver there is a big screwdriver for a watchmaker, which is still a small one uh, to most people. But like, yeah, this is like quite big, big screw, so it's, it's easy to, to work on. Yeah. Put a bit of uh, 9104 uh, just there between the barrel bore and the, and, the, and the bridge to make sure it's lubricated. And on this uh, point where we're going to put the, the click, that's where the click is rotating, so I need to make sure it's nicely lubricated as well. Okay, so first, before putting the ratchet wheel, we need to assemble and put the, 
the click spring. You remember that's the spring that jumped when I uh, remove the click. So this is a nice, uh, so normally it's like steel like color and this one is like as a copper color. So I hold it in place with the plastic stick and I gently push it with the tweezers to make it sure it goes in a groove. When it's in place, I just put the click on top of it. And I put the screw that go, which is like a specific screw, so you need to make sure you use the right one uh, at the right place. There is a, a lot of screws on a, on, a, on a watch, so you need to make sure you, you put them at the correct place. So some are longer, some are diameter is bigger, some have shoulders, so you need to make sure the right screws are in the right place. Okay, just checking. Yeah, you see, it come any it come under tension when you touch the spring, so that's good. So now we can carry on and put the ratchet wheel with the lip uh, brand on it. So to make sure, like yeah, you get a nice reminder of the of the brand. Okay, I locate it on this square shape. So the, the barrel, like the barrel bore, which has a square shape on one side. To make sure it can uh, drive when you rotate, it will drive and wind the mainspring inside the inside the mainspring assembly, mainspring barrel assembly. Okay. Let's put that's uh, one of the that's always one of the on one of the biggest uh, screws that you will find on the watch. Uh, it's often the one on top of the ratchet wheel. Okay, I keep it in place, just tie it gently, and you see when I turn, this is driving everything. Okay, put a bit of 9104 there. Well, we're gonna put uh, the crown wheel, the crown wheel. So let's put the crown wheel. Okay, and like the ratchet wheel, we need to secure it with the screw. And remember, you see this screw, three line, so reverse threaded. Okay, it's in place. Okay, so now we are done with the, this side and let's move to the other side. So first, uh, I put the cannon pinion. There is nothing in the way, it's uh, friction mounted, so you need to use a bit of float, a bit of force to put it in place. So like that, if there is nothing around, you're sure you don't damage anything. Let's grease uh, the winding pinion. So I use some 9501 to grease on this side. So that's all the friction part, so uh, it's better to use uh, grease than oil. Okay, I put the clutch. And now the winding pinion go in the groove. Oh, this is not easy to put in place. There we go. Now the next part is gonna be the stem. Just uh, undo like to make sure I can. Here we go. Like now, I will I will, I will be able to put it. Uh... Yeah, here we go. He goes in. I need to turn it, and that's it. He went in. It's fully in now. Okay. So when we put the stem, we need to make sure to keep it in place. We keep put the setting lever. And you remember, this is a design where the sitting lever is kept in place with a screw and the screw is on the other side. So this, this is a bit tricky to do. You need to hold the setting lever in place, align with the screw hole with one finger. And on the other side, you need to insert the screw in, in the hole. So here is a hole. This is quite uh, tricky to do. I much prefer the design where the setting uh, lever is is held by uh, by a spring. And basically, when you remove the stem, is you need to push 
uh, rather than unscrew a, a little screw in. It's much easier. This is quite tricky to do. So you see I'm holding on the other side with one hand, turning gently on this side. You feel in your finger, most of the time, you, f you feel that the, the screw yeah, is in place. And when it's in place, you see you can, the setting lever, when you push the stem, is uh, working. So now we carry on with oiling all the pivot point. Again, with some 9104. This is a pivot point where the yoke is going to come. Here is a yoke. And the yoke is coming in, in the middle of the clutch. Like this long arm is go in the middle of the clutch. There. Perfect. Go nicely in place. Need to make sure it is lays flat. And you see, you will see the mechanism after you will need to add the spring, the yoke spring, to make sure everything is kept under tension. And that's why we keep the we keep like a bit of force when you you know you pull on you pull on a stem, and it gives this nice clicking uh, position. So I put this uh, this spring, which is like a long spring, which is like a different design, which I really don't like to put in place. I prefer like the conventional spring, which uh, this is it's very difficult to put this one, so I put it off camera. So now I carry on by oiling the rest of the pivot points. And these wheels as well, you need to make sure they go the correct way. So on some movements, you will see you, you will have one side with which is fully flat and one side which has an angle on the edge. And most of the time, the side which has an angle on the edge go at the bottom. That's what come in contact with the, the clutch, the clutch wheel. So you need to make sure it's on the, on the proper way, put it back in a proper way. So now I put the setting lever spring, which is kept in place with uh, one screw. So I just need to make sure I align everything. This is a very tiny screw here. Yeah? If you compare this screw to the screw we use on the other side to put the bridge in, to put the bridges in place, they're like a third of the size or even quarter of the size. And it's very difficult to locate them. So sometimes I unwind them a bit to make the thread go and after you feel it when you unwind it it will go at the start of the thread it will, it will come down and after you 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 screw it there we go now i'm feeling it where where the beginning of the thread is i'm, I'm unwinding like i feel you you feel and when it's in place there we go you feel it and you can go because you don't want to cross thread as well because they are very tiny screws so the thread is very thin as well so it's very easy if you use too much force you will cross thread uh, the plate uh, and after you need to find another plate and on some movement it can be very difficult to find or expensive as well if it's like a rare movement so you need to be really careful when you assemble the watch you don't want to use too much force here i put some grease and you can see in the spring uh, yeah, this is when you when you wind the watch, or when you put uh, when you change uh, to our setting, this is what make it uh, jump. There was something wrong there, so just dis disassemble the the mainspring, and yeah, I see what's the problem. I put the yoke the wrong way around because you could see when when I was putting the the watch in the changing time mode, it was not driving the wheels. So it was not pushed all the way. So yeah, I put the yoke the wrong way around, you need to go this way. So again, like this, this is not a big mistake, it's just you lose a bit of time, but nothing was damaged or anything, so that's not a problem. But sometimes by putting stuff wrong, you, you can damage a part. So you need to make sure when you disassemble the parts, you take pictures or take video. So if you have any doubt when you put it back together, you can go back to your picture or your videos. 
And here is this spring that I talked about earlier, which I really don't like to put in place. So I need to hold it in place. It goes in a groove. So I put it, I will keep it in place with the flat bit of this plastic, plastic stick. And with my tweezers, I will gently push it up until it goes on top and lay down flat on top of the yolk and lay down flat. Here we go. Now it's in place. So now everything is looking good. So you can put back the setting lever spring. Again with this little tiny screw. First you need to make sure because you see the, the, the screw is small so in the whole the whole way it goes in is really small as well so you need to make sure everything is aligned. Put it, make it stand up and take your small screwdriver and by using a tiny bit of uh, force, gentle pressure on it just to make sure you find the right, yeah there we go, now I found uh, the engagement point and I can screw it in place. Okay, so now let's check. First, let's arm the spring, put it in position. Now it's tight. And let's check, you see, now it's, it's driving everything when I put it in a changing time mode, so it's good. Small mistakes, but uh, not a costly one, so it's fine. Okay, I put the bridge that's holding all the wheel in place. Like again, this is the same type of screw as small. So go slowly, find the right point, and put it in, and, and secure it in place. This one is, is held in place with two screws, two little ones to make sure it's laying down flat. Okay, so everything is done on this side. Now we can move to the other side and we are going to start to assemble the pallet fork and the balance assembly. So first the pallet fork, just put it in place to make sure it's the bottom pivot going due. Just gently push it until you find this position. You need to be really patient for this because you don't want to damage the pivot of your of your pallet fork. And when it's in place, you can move it right to left and you will see it rotate around one axis. You see it just rotating, so it means it's in place at the bottom. And now I can put the Right for cock on top of it, and I will have to do the same to align the pivot at the top. And when it's in place, the fork will be flat, and it will it will rotate around the, the pivot points very easily. So the same here, you don't want to put too much pressure because you don't want to bend any part underneath because they are very thin. So. A little bit of force can bend the pivot point, so I just use a tiny bit of pressure. So a bit one side, say check, no it doesn't go fully, just move it left, right, up, down, until you see it going down and into the right uh, position. Just keep the full to, to show you how long it can take and how patient you need to be sometime uh, until you find the right spot, yeah? Yeah, looks like now, you see it, it was rotating around the axis nicely, so it's in place. So when it's in place, we are gonna put the screws. These are small as well. But you can see there is a ni uh, nice uh, hole on the uh, on this little bridge so you make it easy to, to keep in place to keep it in place when, when you screw it down okay the first one I tied the first one 
just changing the palette fork is still moving, so yeah, that's good. And now I put the second one. It doesn't want to go. You need to make sure it's in the right position, upside down. I mean, not upside down, sorry. So, yeah, I screw the second one, and after we can uh, check if the power is coming correctly to the palette fork, which is the first bit, the first important bit. And you can see, after putting a bit of a wine, it's clicking. When I gently push it, it's clicking in place. Left, right, left, right. So it means that there is power. Okay, I just put this shim. I mean, it's like it was underneath the balance assembly. So I think it's to keep it up, uh, to keep it up. So to make sure that there is no, like the pivot point are not touching the bottom of the, the in cable locks and you can wow he went straight away even it was not even it was not even on fully that he went straight away okay it's beating pretty good so now let's put the screw to make sure it's in place properly okay let's uh, screw it properly and see if the balance is still beating Yeah, you see, it's the plate is perfectly located now. It's fully flat, and it's beating very well. Okay, let's put the hour wheel. And now, I'm going to unscrew the the screw dial. That's the screw which are holding the, the dial in place here. So just before putting the, the dial, you need to make sure they are unscrewed so that the feet can go in the holes. I did a, a light clean, but it was quite clean anyway at the beginning, just a light brush uh, with water on top. The dial is looking uh, very nice. So now it's in place. Just screw, screw the dial, feet screw again to make sure the dial stays in place. Here we go, you tie it just a tiny bit, but not too much. Perfect, let's do the other side. There we go. Perfect, so now everything is, is in, in position, we can carry on. And the next step is we are going to put the end. So first the hour hand. Uh, I align it to midnight, but actually there is no date function, so we don't need to align it perfectly. It's uh, fine. What's what's important is between the hour and the minute, and that they need to be aligned uh, at midnight or any other position to be sure that when you when you are at the hour, like uh, the minute hand is uh, perfectly at twelve, uh, while, while the other hand, the hour hand, sorry, is on uh, on the right hour. So just check if it's uh, laying down flat, if it's not touching anything. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, so now let's put the menu time. So this is where we need to align it as best as we can. Okay, let's put it in place with the tweezers and yeah, make sure it stay in place. And now we are gonna press it with the hand setting tool. Okay, and there when it's in place, you need to make sure, same again, it's laying down flat. Uh, when it's rotating, it's not touching anything. The, the hand are not touching anything. It's not touching the dial. And here we check, yeah, at six o'clock, it looks good. Let's check at nine o'clock, looks good. Just checking everything is flat. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Okay, so now the last uh, hand is uh, the hour. The sorry, the second hand, which is a central one. So we just put it. There we go. Straight, in, it goes straight in place, and you can see, as soon as it's on uh, on the second pinion, it just starts rotating. So now we are just gonna lightly press it down to make sure it's uh, 
get is stay in place with friction so just a light push just making sure the hands are not touching the second hand yeah they are passing underneath perfectly okay so now i remove the crown assembly i need to remove the crown assembly to put uh, the movement and the die back in the case and you remember this movement is uh, i mean the dial was coming out from the front and not the back so same we put it the same way we put it from the front side i put the stem and the crown back in place and uh, i clean the glass i did a quick polish on the glass and actually the glass is you can press it down uh, by, by the finger yeah it's like a, like a case back if you want put a, a seal just to make sure it's uh, stay watertight even if it's not like a diving watch and here it is i will clean the the crystal so this is like a, a plastic uh, kind of crystal so you can polish it and remove the scratch with poly watch now that the watch is finished let's uh, put it on a time grapher as you can see the amplitude is quite good as 263 degree uh, the second per day is uh, plus three seconds so that's uh, perfect so the, the watch is uh, running nicely so i'm very happy with this if you like this video i have another video on a lip himalaya model which is a very nice vintage watch that i have uh, serviced as well there will be many more projects coming to my channel so if you want to keep updated please follow me on my social media patreon and instagram you can find the link in my description and like and subscribe this video and my channel you will be updated with the next one so see you next time bye bye